So here we can see our CBUS touchscreen. It's a fully touchscreen monitor. If I need to select any menus, I just put my finger to the screen and select it by touching. The screen itself has three different display modes. Here we can see I'm in display one, which is my road mode, which then shows the likes of my road speed, my fuel levels, my RPM. I can then select display two, which is gonna show my field mode. So this is the mode that we're seeing once we're using the machine in the field. We can see my various speeds of my engine adjustments or my component adjustments and also my loss monitors. And then display three is a quick adjustment menu for the likes of my automatic functions. So the likes if I have cruise pilot enabled or if I have any CMOS functions enabled. So on our road display screen, we can see the likes of our engine RPM, our fuel level, our forward speed, our engine temperature, and our add blue fill level. Additionally, on the right hand side of the screen, we have three additional menus. These menus can be tailored to how the operator wants them to be shown. For example, if I wanted a different menu shown in the middle section, I can go into my settings and select a different menu. Along the bottom of the menu, you can also see some additional display features. I've got the likes of my time and my date, my auger and loading position, my gear selection and field scanner position, again my forward speed selection, and this also menu on the bottom shows me the favorite menu that I currently have selected. So at the moment I can see that I have my partial whip selected. On my secondary display screen, this is the menu that we'll be using most in the field. So here I can see any of my available combine adjustments. So I can currently see how my concave is set. Obviously the machine is not currently running, so some of the speeds are showing zero. But I can also then see the likes of my sieve settings, my fan settings, and my drum settings. At the top, I also have a tank fill sensor. So at the moment, my tank is empty. I am 0%. As my tank fill increases, this percentage will increase. At the bottom, I can also see the likes of my loss monitors and again, my forward speed and engine load as a percentage. The loss monitors themselves are working in an upward scale. So the more losses I get, the larger the bars you see will increase. So here we can see walker losses as this is a walker machine and my sieve losses. I also then have the likes of my return sensors so I can see what is actually coming through my returns in the term of quantity. Again, all of these menus are touchscreen so if I need to make any adjustments, for example, if I need to adjust my loss sensitivity, I can click onto the screen and adjust my sensitivity accordingly. If I want to turn the sensitivity of my straw walkers up, I can click on here, and then I can bias that sensitivity up and down and confirming it by using the tick. Again, I have three additional monitors on the right-hand side, all which can be selected from the settings menu. Display three is showing a quick access to my automatic functions on the machine. So again, we can see an outlay of the combine at the top, but here I have quick access to the automatic functions. So for example, this machine is only spec with the likes of Cruise Pilot, so I can click in and go and set my Cruise Pilot strategy. Additionally, if my machine was fitted with more CMOS options, I could then go and select my CMOS options from here. I can also then select the sensor for my GPS. For example, if I was using a GPS sensor on top of the cab, like the field scanner, and then I wanted to select my GPS signal, as in my RTK signal, I can go in and select the sensor which is being used. Again, all these selections are available from the internal menu. I can go down the side here and select the menu which I want to use. But the display screen itself has these quick functions available to it at all times. Along the top of the menu, I can also see some more additional functions. Here, if I have a camera selected, I can select the camera symbol, and this is gonna be displayed instead of the main display icon itself, in this case being the outline of the combo. I can also have some quick access to preloaded crop settings. So in my crop menu, which we'll take a little look at later, I can go in and select some favorites, which I can then preload depending on the crop I'm in. I also then have the option to quick access my jobs. If I've loaded any jobs into my CBIS menu, for example, if I'm swapping days or swapping crops, I can quickly swap between a job one or a job two 
or the rest of the list. If I don't want to use any of the additional CBUS functions or buttons on the side armrest, I can also adjust my combine settings from the screen itself. For example, if I want to go in and adjust my concave gap, I can click on the concave unit itself, click on the gap, and then open or close that crack, depending on how much crop I want to enter my system. Again, some of these functions will be greyed out if the system itself is not running. I also have access to adjust my chopper position from inside the cab. So if I want to, say, go from the likes of swapping to chopping a crop, I click on the rear chopper and I can choose its distribution system position. Additionally, I can also set the likes of my chopper width. If I find that in the field maybe I'm not spreading as wide as I need to be, or I'm overspreading into standing crop, I can adjust these settings on the go. At the top of the screen, I can see my pre-selected auto contour menu. On the left here, displaying my auto contour heights, remembering that I have two heights available to me at all times for selection of my header. And I also have my two preset heights without using the auto contour system. The number in the center displays the height of the header away from the neutral ground position, which will be zero. Anything less than zero is applying ground pressure of the header itself to the ground. The center section, we can see I have a pre-selected settings menu for any of my machine internal settings. And on the bottom, you can see my yield mapping or my yield readout settings for my throughput of my machine. This then shows hectares cut, my tons a hectare and tons an hour, and how many hectares I'm cutting an hour. Again, if I want to adjust any of these side menus here, all I have to do is go into my settings menu on the right hand side, select user defined secondary display, and then I can select the setting itself. If I want to adjust any of my user areas on the right hand side, all I have to do is go to my settings menu, go to my assignment of display areas. In this case, I'm trying to adjust display two. Select the area I want to change. So for this case, let's say two. And choose the item I want to change it with. So for this, I will choose the chopper system. Now back on the main menu, I can see that the chopper system itself has been selected for display. As I've mentioned earlier, on the armrest joystick, we have now function keys or favorite keys that we can select on the go. By moving up and down on the buttons on the joystick, I then bring up a side menu of favorites available to myself. I can then select that favorite. So for this example, the side tilt of my cutter bar, and then to adjust this, I use the toggle switch, which we saw on the rear of the joystick earlier. It's worth noting that the selection that I last chose, even if the menu disappears, is still selected here at the bottom of the screen and is still adjustable by the toggle switch. This new favorites key gives us very quick access to any adjustments we need to make on the go. If I need to adjust any of my favorite selection, all I have to do is go to my settings menu again, select favorite management, choose the setting I would like to adjust. So for this case, cross leveling control and choose any of the available menus to me that I would like to change it for. So for this case, I will select upper sieve. I can then go back to my main menu and I can see when I go up my favorites key, I now have upper sieve selected, which I can adjust using the toggle switch on the go. Again, this allows our customers to keep their hand on the joystick at all times. They don't need to go to the side hand panel to adjust if needed. 